All right, welcome to the Success Agency Podcast. I think this is episode five, and we're sitting with Larry Sharp, Libertarian candidate of 2018 for governor, businessman, entrepreneur, activist. Super cool guy. Super cool guy. John, easy day. He was so cool, he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. That's true, yes. Yeah, how was. was that? How did that actually come about? The most important thing to remember is if you are ever trying to move forward and you're not part of the establishment, mm -hmm. the podcast world is the right place to go. It's why I went on your podcast, I'll go on every podcast, mm -hmm. because it's the future of media. And most of the people who are mainstream have not figured that out yet. Mm -hmm. When I was in a Joe Rogan podcast, I got the most views ever. I got over 700,000, I think. I know that part. It's it so was huge. Uh, Dave Rubin was also good. So Dave Rubin also. Yeah, I saw that Dave one. Rubin was about, uh, maybe it was 100,000. I'm not sure mm -hmm. in that area. Um, I was also on Glenn Beck. Also on Dave Smith. I was on many different podcasts. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I went on them, is, as I said, it's the future. But more importantly, people who are generally speaking, under 30, 30 or under in that mm -hmm. area, they actually prefer long form, yeah, right? Yeah. They actually like the one-on-one, -on -one, the talk, the conversation, mm -hmm. to know who the person actually is versus just the sound bites, mm -hmm. right? And with they that prefer too, because you could take the long form and split it up, throw it on Instagram, Correct. clips on Facebook, even clips on YouTube, and then direct them to the long form, and you'll just sit there, because people have commutes every day. So yes, there's hours it's, it's and good hours. for marketing, it's good for uh, piecemeal, whatever the case may be. So that's why I actively went after them, right? Mm -hmm. So I got on, on that because I wanted people to see who I was and be able to ask me actual questions and to show that I'm an actual human. Yep. Something else you'll notice too, and it again goes more for the youth, and I'm looking more to, to, my entire goal is to make change for the future, so I've got to get people who are under 30 also. Mm -hmm. Most of them also like podcasts, yes. right? Which is important. They enjoy the podcast mm -hmm. world. My do I have daughter, a daughter now who's 14. She doesn't watch TV anymore. Mm -hmm. She doesn't watch TV anymore, right? Yeah, when I was 14. My sister's 14, and it's yeah, just YouTube. That's correct. It's YouTube, YouTube or Netflix mm -hmm. or whatever. Her own thing she watches. When I was 14, TV was my life. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's a different world now. It just doesn't exist anymore. Yep. So I'm happy to make the podcast piece happy for those reasons, right? Getting the new people to, to hear who I am. But something else, you'll notice the entire campaign, almost two years now of campaigning, and I never used notes once. Yep. I just adds, I did debates without notes. I just mm -hmm. spoke. I could attest that I was at when you were, came to University of Buffalo. Yes. I just spoke, and people mm -hmm. just ask questions and I just answer them. Yeah, so why do you think that um, you weren't able to get as many votes? Like, how many were you anticipating? Yeah, we actually did much better than, than people believe, right? Mm -hmm. But the reason is, and this is- Because your numbers, when people polled that knew you were outstandingly high. Yes, in reality, we were polling throughout most of the campaign. This is internal polling, if you know anyone who was actually running uh, besides me. We were polling between six and 11%, mm -hmm. depending upon where it was and throughout the campaign. The lowest we ever polled was 6%, the highest was about 11% is what we actually were polling. Um, the results showed about 2%. In reality, they were far more. And the reason I say it is because I was the only person on the ballot who actually was on the same line as anybody else. I was on the same line as Stephanie Miner. Yeah. Yes, I was the only one on the other side. Mm -hmm. We told them it was unfair. They said, we don't care, too bad. Reprinted them, didn't change a thing. I remember, I remember seeing that. Remember, yes, I it was horrible. So what happened is many people didn't know that she was not my lieutenant governor. So they checked both. Uh. When you check both, that's a voided vote. Mm -hmm. And there were literally six figures worth of voided votes throughout New York uh. State. So I actually got probably 300,000 votes, 400,000 votes, mm -hmm. I'm guessing, I don't know. So, but we got enough to be on the ballot for the next round. So we probably got about 6% of the vote in reality, mm -hmm. is my guess. So because you that's running again? In, uh, it looks like yes. The odds it'll are very high. It'd be 2022. The odds are high, I'll run again. And unless someone else shows up who's, you know, got the money and the time, I'll back them. But unless that happens, <laughs> it looks like it's me again. And yes. Did you think about running, trying to get the presidential nod for the Libertarian? No, no, no. Look, for me to run, remember something. When I ran last year, I was the only person running who did not get a government check. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was either working for the government or had worked for the government. They were all getting a check. I took a year and a half out of my life to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, I literally took a year and a half to not get a salary. I have a wife and two kids, and I live in New York City. My wife does not work. <laughs> so you can imagine what my finances are. So, and my time and energy. Mm -hmm. So, no, like, there's no way I could just, I couldn't do it. So, no 2020 for me. All right, yeah, just a little bit of, I guess, background on you. So what business were you in before? You Still got... am in. Still am in. Still am in. <laughs> yes, it's this. I had to come back to it, which mm -hmm. is, of, I'm a consultant, right? Mm -hmm. I teach people, um, tra I te train and teach people when it comes to leadership. 
um, sales, marketing, business growth. I teach at a couple colleges. Nice. What kind so of colleges? I teach at Brook right now. Um, I've okay. taught in the past at Columbia and Yale's graduate school. Mm -hmm. um, I've taught at John Jay College, but right nice. now I teach at Baruch College. Nice. Yes. Yeah, that's a great school. I heard a lot of Yeah, absolutely. Great school. So. Yeah, so um, a lot of things you see right now in politics is what I've talked about with um, when I sat down with um, Assemblyman DPH. We talked about the rise, like the socialism, and the yes. being masked as democratic socialism. So, what absolutely. are your take on like the people coming out like for it, like AOC yes. and several um, things? Uh, the first thing to remember is, look, you realize something. The country itself, as a general rule, is going left. Mm -hmm. Most of it's going left because of urbanization, mm -hmm. right? As kids move towards the cities, they become urbanized because of just basically people living on top of each other. Yep. And that's because there's been almost no recovery since 2008 outside of cities. Mm -hmm. So kids are running to the cities. With that in mind, no recovery. If you're 30 or under right now, you've been told since you were born that you're amazing because mm -hmm. you're born, you've been given participation trophies for showing up. Mm -hmm. It's a common thing. It's the culture now, right? It's, it's, it's the thing. You also were told that if you just go to college and follow the rules, there'll be a great job waiting for you when you get out. So many people who are under 30 have done that. If you're under 30 right now and you got out, say, 2008, 9, 10, 2012, 14, 16, and you got out of college or high school, there was nothing for you. So you struggled. Yep. You were told if you do it, you'll get these things. And you did it, and it wasn't there. And so you've got a great degree, you thought, but it's now worthless. You're in tens of thousands, not six figures worth of debt. And you're working as a barista. Yeah. Or you're working two jobs, mm -hmm. right? Or you have four roommates in the city or you live at home. If you don't live in the city, you live with your mom and your dad. So you have no ownership. You don't own anything. You believe, or you could believe, not you do, but you could easily believe that your future was stolen from you. That, you know, through fraud. Mm -hmm. That they've lied to you. So you know what looks good to you right now? Socialism. <laughs> of course it does. You point. think it looks good now because you believe that this has been stolen from you. So of course you think socialism is a good idea. I get it. That's normal. That's what could be done. That's what we're trying to do right now. So with that in mind, I'm not so mad at the people. That makes any sense. Okay. I'm not so angry at them. Mm -hmm. That makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I get it. Our goal has to be you can't just go socialism bad. You've got to give them an answer. Okay. And if you notice, everything I talked about, I talked about the ideas of allowing people to pursue mm -hmm. happiness the way they want to pursue it, allowing New York State in particular mm -hmm. to embrace new culture, new technology, so that youth want to come back here and be more mm -hmm. entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. to, en to embrace these things so that youth says, you know what, there is a place for me in New York State. I don't need socialism. I can do it without it. Okay. The bigger problem, though, overall is mm -hmm. when people are afraid, they make bad decisions. That's what they do. When groups of people are afraid, they either cry for socialism or they cry for a strong man. You see that right now. Mm -hmm. The strong man is represented by Trump and socialism is represented by AOC. Mm -hmm. By the way, both from my district in Queens. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, so that's what people are crying for. And if you just yell, Trump is evil or socialism is bad, it doesn't change people's minds. No, I they go to either one that they think is less, than, less bad than the other, mm -hmm. right? If I think Trump is, is better than socialism, I go Trump. If I think socialism is better than Trump, I go socialism. Mm -hmm. I've got to give them answers. So the, the, the answer to your question is, it is natural, it is normal, it's not crazy at all. If you were that person who felt that it was, your future was robbed or stolen from you, you might think the same way. Our answer has to be, find them an answer don't just yell at them. Okay, and where do you think that um, will come into play? Do you think it's more along the lines in the education system, or? It is everything, but for those people who are already through the education system, it doesn't help them anymore, mm -hmm. right? So it's too late for them. For those coming out, we have to revamp our education system completely. And if you remember from my, my campaign, I had a love, whole, whole different plan, platform. right? But for those right now, the biggest things to do, believe it or not, is embrace new technology and end the licensing issues that we have. Mm -hmm. Right? I want to make it so that you decide tomorrow you want to start a new business. It's like Hong Kong easy, right? You've decided to do it right now. You can get out there and go do it. Not just that. I want things like, as I mentioned before, we should be regulating cannabis and hemp like onions. Yep, I remember saying that. Literally so that a small farmer could decide to create a craft grow for craft hemp, hemp rope, hemp creep, whatever the case may be, set up a little manufacturing place on their own farm. The youth would flock there. Yep. Lots of young... Because you saw it with the mass migration to Colorado. Yes, absolutely. You also saw people stay here in New York when it came to beer. 
craft yes. beer. Yes. Exactly right. So there's, we always been Lockport. There's a New York beer company that's one bingo. Of the, a very very large business now. Absolutely. That's exactly. So what I'm saying is the stuff I'm making up, mm -hmm. right? It's there's proof here. You want to get the youth to be happy and not want to run for socialism? Allow us to have craft hemp, craft cannabis. Allow cryptocurrency back in New York State, mm -hmm. right? Let 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 them start that up if they want mm -hmm. to. Allow the vaping industry to not be destroyed in this state, right? I know people hate vaping, but so are some people like vaping. Yep. Who it's cares? A free <laughs> it's a free country, right? And the youth enjoy getting involved in those new ideas mm -hmm. that you want so to make it happen. That's how you do it. To explain that these new ideas are all part of a free market and a less restricted government, then they'll sort of embrace capitalism more so than socialism. No, not at all. I don't want to use free market or capitalism. I never use those phrases. Mm -hmm. Those phrases have been co-opted by the by, by Democrats as evil. Mm -hmm. I never use those phrases ever. It's consumer driven. Just consumer. Everything's consumer driven. Right, and that's what we want. Right, I want consumer driven and I want to focus all of our policies not on what is righteous, but on what will make people happy. Right, we have confused in, in, in our politics today, we've confused tolerance with forced embracing. Right, so it's no longer just please tolerate me, just tolerate me. No, it's you must embrace exactly how I feel. And if you don't embrace it, you're evil and mean. Mm -hmm. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. That's not what America's about. America's about do what you want to do, man. Yep. Just don't force me. We've lost that, right? Our founding documents are life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. No party talks about that but us. We're the only ones to talk about that. No one else talks about that. They talk about I'm better than the other guy or... I'm less worse than the other guy. Now, have you been a lifelong libertarian? I don't know what that means. Like when you registered to vote. When oh, you no, 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 not at all. No, no, not at all. Um, I came to the Libertarian Party in a very different way than most people did. Mm -hmm. Most people come to the Libertarian Party because they heard some libertarian guy speak, or they heard Ron Paul speak, or they heard Gary Johnson speak, and they go, boom, I'm libertarian now. Kind of, but not really. I came to the libertarian world more from the business side of Robert Ringer who was actually an objectivist and Ann Rander, right? I'm not an objectivist, but he is. Mm -hmm. And many of those um, ideas do overlap into libertarianism. Okay. So I became kind of from that route. From I was teaching post-industrial leadership in my business world for many years. Mm -hmm. Post-industrial leadership is about, it's not about me knowing what everyone does and forcing them to do what, what I tell them to do. That's factory days. Those days have been over for decades. Post-industrial leadership is about, I don't really need your arms and legs as much, I need your brain, I need your ideas, I need your initiative, I need you to be able to shift and move with the times quickly. Mm -hmm. That's what I need from you, right? So that's post national leadership. That means you have to want to do it. You have to volunteer to do it. I've got to encourage you and show you that this has value, that you take ownership of it. Mm -hmm. This is new leadership. So I was teaching libertarianism already. Yes. So by the time I did hear Gary Johnson in 2012, I was ready to hear it. Mm -hmm. So even prior to that, I was the guy who just hated the two parties. I hated the system. So in the 90s, I was for Ross Perot because he wasn't them. Then I was for Nader because he wasn't them. And if you would have asked me then what were any of Nader's or Perot's actual policies, I couldn't have told you. I, w I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I just thought, it's not them. <laughs> it's my guy. Mm -hmm. So when 2012 came around, I was basically like, it doesn't matter anymore. I didn't even care. I don't know if I was even gonna vote anymore. I didn't care. Mm -hmm. And then I heard Gary Johnson speak and I was like, oh, that guy makes some sense. He's an entrepreneur. Huh, who are these guys? Librarians, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, libertarians, oh, okay. And then I went and checked them out and before mm -hmm. you know it, um, that year I joined the Libertarian Party uh, locally and then eventually I was part of the National and I'm a lifetime member of the National mm -hmm. and just, it went on from there. It's funny you say that because I, came to the Libertarian Party, actually from a Facebook ad from you. There we go. I'm in social media marketing, so I was like, oh, Facebook ads. I was like, why are all the politicians running these? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then I see you have a massive following. I was like, wow, I, this is something to get behind. And then I see someone, because I'm a conservative, so I see someone sure. like Molinero just completely not support the president of the United States of his own party. Absolutely. And then Cuomo just destroy him in a... in the debate. And Embarrass like, him in a debate. In, it was terrible. Embarrass and him in a debate, yeah. I see you, and then there's... Zero hate. There's yep. Any, there's nothing but hey, this is a free country. Do what you want to do. Let's have free market economics. Let's let people just be Americans. Yes, and 
I'm the only candidate, if you if you looked on the party, to be forward with you. And not only not to interrupt, but not only that, so, but yeah. innovative new ideas. Yes. Innovative new ideas. Yes. Like the licensing of bridges and the new education systems. These are new ideas that have to be put into place yes. if we want new results in America. And the funny thing is, I lost the election, mm -hmm. but my idea is still moving forward. Yes. If you've noticed, Western New York, where we are now, mm -hmm. they're starting to non-enforce, they're using non-enforcement, the SAFE Act. That was exactly my way of getting the SAFE Act, mm -hmm. right? I was supporting the Second Amendment, and I couldn't end the law, so what could I do? Not enforce until we can repeal it. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it now, even though I lost, yep. right? The idea of uh, licensing, D.C. and Florida looking at those ideas right now, even though I lost. Because mm -hmm. if you want to, you can go to LarrySharp.com, and all of the ideas are still there, right? Mm -hmm. When I was on Joe Rogan at the end of Joe Rogan, if you remember, he said, Larry, you got to lock these ideas down. And I was like, why? He's like, well, people will take them. Exactly. What did I say? That's the reason. Like, yes, please, take them all. That'd be awesome. Please take all the ideas, mm -hmm. right? I want a better New York. I don't care if it's me or you or him or her. Who cares? Yep. Do it. Just take them all. I, haven't, my, I didn't take my website down. Mm -hmm. It's still there. All my policies are right to take them all. It's all awesome. I don't mind. Take every one of them. Yeah, so now, because you want a better New York, what do you think of the idea to split the state? Yeah, I get it. This is a popular thing. Split, mm -hmm. the, split the state into two or into three. Three is what I've been hearing yes. a lot of. Um, and the, the name I love, my favorite name is West Vermont, by the way. That's my favorite name. I never, I have it Yes, there's a bunch of like, there's New Amsterdam, New, Amsterdam, New York, Montauk, and then New Montauk, yeah, all different types, right? I, 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 my favorite name I ever heard was West, it just <laughs> seems funny to me. West Vermont, love that one. Anyway, um, none of those are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of it though, because it lets people re understand and reinforces that New York State is a diverse state. I think it's the most diverse state in the country. It might be, mm -hmm. but it's very diverse. And this is what I love. In fact, we actually do have the most diverse county in the nation, which is Queens County, by the way. But, um, but I do think it's so diverse. What does that mean? We should be pushing towards what I was talking about the entire campaign, which is basically home rule. The idea that each county should be its own county. Each region should be its own region, mm -hmm. right? The governor, no one city should be running any state. Agreed. Whether that whether that city is New York City or Albany, it should not be running our state, mm -hmm. right? Albany should be running Albany. Yes. New York City should be running New York City. So what does that mean? That means let counties be counties, let regions be regions. It's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. I, it, I'm okay with this idea. Yeah, because especially in Western New York and even the Southern Tier, if they instituted fracking, you've got hundreds of thousands of new jobs instantly. You've got people coming to the Southern Tier, you've got people coming to Buffalo instead of... Well, my point is, people ask me, Larry, are you pro-anti-fracking? I'm neither. Mm -hmm. It's a local issue. Yes. Right? I'm neither. My issue is two things. Property rights and transparency, as I talk about all the time. My entire campaign was always about transparency and property rights. If you want to frack in the Southern Tier, and be, I think there are 15 counties who could frack, if I'm not mistaken. I think 14 parties said they don't want it. I think there's only one that kind mm -hmm. of thinking about wanting it anyway. So the odds are you wouldn't, probably wouldn't have much fracking anyway, even if we did say yes. it was okay to do. My point is, why is the governor deciding this? Mm -hmm. There are only two issues I care about. Number one, the reason why fracking, the fracking industry got such a bad rap is because they were not transparent up front at all. They hid behind intellectual property laws and said, mm -hmm. we can't tell you what we're doing or what we're putting in the ground because of intellectual property. If they stay that way, they may not frack. Mm -hmm. You may only frack if two things are true. Number one, you are 100% transparent with what you're putting in the ground and how you're putting it in. Number one, if you won't do that, no fracking. If you do that, I'm okay as long as every single person who is in, involved, their property agrees. Mm -hmm. if, if they all agree and you're transparent, frack. If you won't agree or not transparent, no fracking. So that policy could just be put into place with almost any... That is correct, it be yes. Put into place almost every and this industry. is my point, and I'm going to bring this up. It's a very important piece. You will find many people say things like, we need to, be, we need to care about rule of law and nation of laws. I'm not impressed by either. Mm -hmm. Imperial Japan, the Jap Japan that bombed us in Pearl Harbor, was a, was a, was a nation of laws. Mm -hmm. Not impressive. <laughs> was not impressed at all. Lots of things are nations of laws. And they say, well, then we have nation of men? That's the, that's the alternative? That's the alternative, mm -hmm. right? Men die, laws change, principles don't. Mm -hmm. They are eternal. I wanna be a nation of principles, right? Principles are the same. Property rights, freedom, transparency. These are principles that we should always have, mm -hmm. right? If we always have these principles, we won't require as many laws because it'll all be obvious. Mm -hmm. Is it transparent? 
are there are people volunteering? Am I using force? No. Well, we're pretty good then. <laughs> we're pretty good then. I know. It just it's discouraging to see these get these get just so complex and yes. Because oh. it hurt. All, at the end of the day, it hurts small business owners. It hurts. Every single time. Remember something. The more detailed the laws are, the more the elites win. Every time. Mm -hmm. That is a 100% rule, and it's very rare that any rule is 100%. That one's 100%. No, because I know I just started my second business, and I'm trying to, trying to throw events, and it's like, I can't afford to get that type of insurance. That's I correct. I can't afford to get that type of license. I can't afford to LLC it immediately. I can't afford Yes, it. absolutely. And Especially there, being a 22-year-old. And it's always, in the, it's always in the guise of safety, mm -hmm. right? So absolutely, 100%. You, you got to remember something. The difference between regulations and standards, this is a critical difference between the two. Regulations means one entity, in this case government, has a monopoly in what is right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Standards means anyone can decide what are standards. Mm -hmm. Regulations also means if you don't do it, I will either physically stop you or I will punish you with either money, fines, or something. Yep. Standards means if you don't do it, you don't get my approval, but you can do it. And you might say, well, Larry, that's terrible. No, no, it's good. When you have regulations, any crime you commit is no longer against the individual. The crime is now against the state. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Different crime. Which is why when someone, you have some issue that, you know, some guy dist uh, kills eight people with something he does. He says, I did nothing wrong. I follow all the rules. Okay, eight people are dead. No, I've, now the state's playing. I, no, but I did nothing wrong mm -hmm. because I follow the rules. See, his crime of killing eight people isn't against eight people. His crime is against the state because he might have broken a regulation, a rule. Mm -hmm. So now the state says, pay me a fine, and we're good. Eight people are dead. But now if we have regulations, more people will die. Okay, I'll give you an example. Health food stores. In health food stores, there's almost no regulation, right? Lots of standards. Mm -hmm. Standards from insurance standards, business practices standards, industry standards within people who make the, the products. Where are all the massive deaths from health food stores? None, they don't exist. Mm -hmm. Doesn't exist. Literally decades of health food stores existing. Where are all the deaths? Zero. I don't know. Well, that's not zero. But where are the masses? None. You don't see that. The FDA has killed and maimed millions of Americans. And what are the repercussions? None. Right? Imagine for a second there was a product that was in a health food store that if you took this product, 80% chance or higher, a high chance that you become addicted. And when you become addicted, you do dumb, terrible, dumb things that would ruin your life. If that existed in a health food store, how long would that last in a health food store? Maybe 30 days. Yeah. Maybe. That, that's probably high. Yes. But in a worst case scenario, 30 days, that product would be out of health food stores, nobody would be selling it, and if I made that product, you would sue me directly, mm -hmm. and I would, you'd get some kind of compensation from my insurance company, some kind of compensation. You would. That would happen. How about the FDA? That's literally happening now every day. Oxycodone. Every the opioid you see. No, it I is know, literally I've, destroying I've had personal experiences with you know. people that have died using drugs. My mom was an addict. Mm -hmm. I know, yes. I get it completely, yes. That's happening now. Who's paying the price? Nobody. It's sad. It's, that's one so, of the saddest issues. Especially so you can't in... tell me regulation saves us. Mm -hmm. Standards save us. UL, right, for electronics. UL decides if the electronic is good. You get a stamp or not, mm -hmm. right? Where are all the deaths from massive UL products that are burning people down? Nowhere. Right? Um, the, the circle you, if you happen to be, you care about kosher food. I'm from New York City, a very high Jewish population. Mm -hmm. like my friends are Jewish. Some of them have kosher households. Mm -hmm. They have to have a circle you, which shows that this is now kosher. Right? I don't know if, that, if that's kosher or not. Mm -hmm. They care, they check it out, and they buy the products that they think are appropriate. Right? There's no government regulation on what kosher is, mm -hmm. but somehow they survive. Mm -hmm. Right? So standardize, what, what would happen if the product they purchased was not kosher? What if you're Jewish, you care about a kosher household, you buy the product, you find out it's not Jewish, it's not kosher, what would happen? Would There'd happen. be repercussions, mm -hmm. right? It would, social media, would, you wouldn't buy it, you would tell your friends, the company would do something. Mm -hmm. What if there was a federal regulation on what kosher was? <laughs> There'd be no repercussions whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They'd be sorry, pay a fee maybe, that's it. But not just that. When do regulations change? Yeah, exactly. When corporate lobbyists change them, mm -hmm. right? But when do standards change? All the time. All the time. When industries change. Mm -hmm. Standards are actually more valuable, more effective, keep us safer, and fairer to you. 
Because now you decide you're not going to follow the standards. You don't get any of the stamps. I can decide if I want to use you or not. The consumer decides. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. That's, a good, that's actually a good point. Yes. No, because um, I haven't actually heard you talk about the standards thing. So it's actually refreshing. I hope, I hope issues like this get out more yes. and more. Yeah, instead of um, universal basic income. Um, <laughs> yes. what, what are your thoughts on Andrew Yang's policy? There's one thing about UBI I love, and only one thing, mm -hmm. and that is it actually tries to address a real problem. Of course. That I like, that it actually recognizes the true problem. If you're on the left right now, you're, you always say, all the problems are the evil corporations. If you're on the right right now, you say, all the problems are the immigrants. Those aren't our biggest problems. Neither one of them are. Our biggest issue or concern we have to worry about is technology. Mm -hmm. And at least UBI acknowledges that. UBI itself is a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. but, it, but I give it to, I give credit where credit is due. It does at least address a real problem, which no one else is even addressing. Oh, of course. And that's why um, I don't agree with a lot of Andrew Yang, but he... The fact that he addressed the policy and now That's he's correct. going on CNN and talking about it because there are millions and millions of people that will lose their jobs. That's correct, 100%. Mm -hmm. that, so, so that part I like. But the reason why UBI, in theory, I get why people like the concept, right? Conceptually, if UBI were to be put into place, universal basic income, where everyone gets a flat fee no matter what, what most people don't understand UBI, they think UBI is a way of giving to poor. Mm -hmm. Just for clarity of your audience, Everybody gets it. Even Bill Gates gets mm -hmm. UBI. Everybody gets the dollars, mm -hmm. whatever that number would be in the long run, right? 3,000 bucks a month or whatever it is, but you get X dollars. That, in theory, would replace all other welfare, Yes. right? So in theory, it's cheaper, but that's not going to happen. Because even if that were what UBI would become, somebody's going to say, well, I know you get 3,000 bucks, but... I have three kids, so I should get 3,300 mm bucks. -hmm. And then, of course, politicians will be able to now say, well, there's an exception here, and it'll just add more welfare. It won't make welfare cheaper at all. It'll, just, it'll make welfare more expensive, number no, one. I know. I was, um... But there's more worse. Mm -hmm. It now tells people, don't work. There is already a gap between the haves and the have-nots. You create that, the gap will be massive. And his, um, I you will create a sheep his, class. His, um rebuttal to that would be that it's not enough money to live off of. Yes, but that's the future. Mm -hmm. Right, if it isn't, that's the future. Put in place now and then towards the future. No, what I'm good. saying is, if you begin that, I think he's right, it is enough, it's an extra thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. Awesome, so what you've said is, populace, please provide no more value, we're going to debt for you. That's what you've said, right? If you just go, we'll give everyone a thousand bucks, populace, people, don't be innovative, don't fix our problems, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Here is extra money, and you have made no value, so we're gonna go into more debt. We're in what, 22 trillion, is that about 22 right now? 22 trillion, yeah. So we're gonna go to 23 trillion dollars of debt. You do nothing, here's just money, guys. What are we saying for our society? So what's the next level? Well, a thousand bucks isn't enough, you're right. So we need 2,000. So you tell me there's not enough Congress people who will go, wait, if I go for 2,000, I'll get reelected? Of mm -hmm. course there's that many people. And of course, of you give, Everybody a thousand dollars a month, you're going to see a lot more increases in prices and groceries, gas. But no one's going to care because I just keep making my money, mm -hmm. right? There was a comedian who mentioned this, and they said uh, talking about the debt, and he said, um, uh, he said someone's teasing him, saying, "Well, look, we how are we going to pay back twenty some odd trillion dollars, whatever it was at the time?" And he goes, "Oh, we're never paying that back." <laughs> He's like, "You don't take out twenty two trillion dollars. I expect to pay. Like, you don't do that. That's the kind of lo loan you do from a loan shark before you kill yourself. <laughs> That's what you do." And it's a, it's a comedian, but he's right, right? Someone else also said, um, well, we're in trouble because China, we owe China whatever, a billion, a trillion dollars, whatever we owe China, a trillion dollars. He's like, we're not in trouble. China's in trouble. They're never getting that money back. China just gave us a trillion dollars for nothing. We're never getting paid it back. And, you know, sadly, that's where we are right now. So I know you're saying prices go up, but nobody cares. Because we'll just raise UBI more, and we'll just raise it more until eventually the faucet stops running. Yeah. So besides Andrew Yang, who do you think has the best um, chance of getting the Democratic nomination? Um, until the Democrats started eating up Joe Biden. I thought it was Joe Biden, mm -hmm. but they decided to eat their own. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why Democrats would, but I think whatever. I feel like there's going to be a divide even with Democrats because the extreme left and then kind of just the regular left. No, I agree. And again, I'm from New York City, so a lot of Democrats are my friends, and I hear Democrats say these words, damn liberals. <laughs> and I think, you're a Democrat, aren't you? You a liberal? I think that, right? Mm -hmm. But they're like, no, 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 I'm a Democrat. They're the liberal. Mm -hmm. So in their head, there's a crack, I think, in the Democratic Party now. 
excuse me, my wife, New Yorker, um, New York City, was a 20-year Democrat. And just like three years ago, she was like, I can't be Democrat anymore. Just can't do it. Mm -hmm. that the Democrat Party has, become, has gone so far left that even she, a 20-year Democrat, was like, nope, can't do it. I see that, can't along, do it. I see that happening with um, Republicans and then Libertarians. Yes. I see a massive shift of Republicans to the Libertarian Party. Yes. Me being one of them. Yes, yes. Because it's, because it's like, okay, we get the Republican, we get the right wing economics and things, but um, freedom's the most important thing. I view freedom above all else in... Well, it's funny you say that. And relation to the... In New York State, that's true. But you leave the state, it's not true. The Libertarian Party, in, in New York State, if you're a conservative in New York State, you don't have a party. You don't. The conservative party has completely abandoned you. It didn't even put up someone for a primary last time. It did nothing. It's completely abandoned you. Um, Republican Party is completely broken. And it's, locally, it's not. Locally, the Republican Party does function locally. Yes. Statewide, it doesn't function at all. It is, it's non-existent statewide. It's, it's a bunch of local fiefdoms is what it is. Um, so nothing for you. The only part you have is us. Mm -hmm. And that you're seeing it. But if you go to Oklahoma, say, not the case. The Libertarian Party tends to be the party of that, the person who is being oppressed. So in New York State, in New York State, it's a blue state. Conservatives are, are hammered in New York State. Mm -hmm. So conservatives come to the Libertarian Party because we're not perfect conservatives. But we respect you as a conservative. You can be a conservative in our party and, and thrive and survive and we will support you and fight. I support the Second Amendment. I was the only candidate for the Second Amendment mm -hmm. last year. I don't own a firearm. <laughs> so it wasn't because I wanted to fire my own gun. Mm -hmm. It was because it's right. I supported fixing family courts. I'm not divorced. Right? I didn't go through the family court system because it was right. Mm -hmm. I supported many of these things. I support... I support people who do anti-vaxxers don't want to vac vaccinate their kids. I vaccinate my kids. Yeah. I think you should vaccinate your kids. Mm -hmm. And I still support anti-vaxxers because it's a freedom issue, right? Absolutely. It's a freedom issue. So I support things I'm not even for and affect me. That's what libertarians do. So if you're uh, someone who's conservative in New York State, we're the only party for you. If you're, if you're on the left, though, in, in Oklahoma, we're still the only party for you. Because if you're Oklahoma, you're oppressed being from the left. Mm -hmm. We're not the perfect liberals. But we'll support you. Live your life the way you want to. Just don't force us to live like you. But please, live your life the way you want to live it. Go ahead, please. Enjoy. Do your thing. We understand that tolerance does not mean acceptance or embracing. It means tolerance. Mm -hmm. And that you will find libertarians argue often. Why? Because we're a party of principle. Which means I can say, I disagree with what you do or how you do it. I just will never use a law to stop you. And I will tell you, you're wrong. You shouldn't do that. This is my way. Your way's wrong. I can do that. Freedom of speech. Yep. I don't have to shut up. There's no PC police in the libertarian world, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I feel it doesn't the, exist. Mm -hmm. I feel the Libertarian Party was almost what even like George, someone like George Washington could get behind. Hundred like percent. No factions, but conversation in between its own. That's party. correct. So I think that's the Libertarian Party could almost reunite the country. In I say that all the time. It's the only way. It's the third way. Mm -hmm. Because it's the only one that doesn't try to convert. Right? Republicans are trying to convert Democrats. Democrats are trying to convert Republicans. Libertarians are like, don't convert. In fact, don't convert anybody. Mm -hmm. Right? Just live life. Just live life. You're, you're with us. It's fine. I, I was the only campaign. I did this live on Facebook. The only campaign that I would go in and say, how many people here are registered Republicans? Hands will go up. How many registered Democrats? Hands will go up. Mm -hmm. How many registered? Neither. Hands will go up. Because it didn't matter what party you were. It was, do you just want to be left alone? <laughs> I'm here. You want to be left alone? I'm here. Let's do this. Let's just leave each other alone. How about that? How about you go off and be happy? And you let me be happy. How about we let Brooklyn be Brooklyn? We let Erie be Erie. We let Niagara be Niagara. We let Wayne be Wayne. And we're all good. Mm -hmm. Okay, 100%. All right, it seems that there's, it's getting pretty busy in here. So yes. my business name is The Success Agency, so I wanted to start a little new segment. Um, what are your tips for success? What are your success secrets? Number one is resilience. I cannot, I cannot overemphasize the idea of resilience. You have to be willing to get back up. If you're going to start a new business, the number one thing you need is not a good business plan, is not a smart guy, is not lots of money. The number one thing you need is passion because you're gonna get your ass kicked. That's gonna happen. And when it happens, you have to get back up. If you don't have passion, you won't. Number one, 
resilience, mm -hmm. which comes from passion. Second piece, if you're unsure if you should move forward or not, if you're unsure, move forward, period. If it's a bad idea, don't do it. But if you're unsure, always err on the side of action. You can repair later. Always err on the side of action. If you're waiting to make it, get it run right, you will never get it done. Err on the side of action. Don't make, if it's a bad move, don't do it. Mm -hmm. But if you're unsure, err on the side of, do it. Just go, you'll deal that. with it later. I love that. Those are your two things. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking of course. time. I appreciate it. And thank you again for coming all the way through New York State, even after the election. Yes. We love it. We 100%. So thank you for your time. Of Mr. course. Sharp. Have appreciate a good one. It. All righty. All right. Make sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for um, more great podcasts. LarrySharp.com. Go to LarrySharp.com. Follow him on Facebook, Instagram. Anything else you want? Plug? Absolutely. Larry Sharp, comma, libertarian Facebook page, and Larry Sharp Twitter and Instagram. All right. See you guys soon. Thanks again for watching, guys. It was so great talking to Larry Sharp. If you guys are interested in joining the Libertarian Party, go to lp.org for more information there. Be sure to follow Larry on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Follow me on my personal Instagram, the Success Agency Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the whole nine yards. Everything's in the description. So we'll see you guys in the next episode.